good morning. Um, I am in the backyard of Joel Berman from Berman's Fine Wines and Liquors, Spirits, sorry. Um, and we are finally getting to have our interview. He was kind enough, he's set us up beautifully in his backyard here. So I am going to turn the camera around so you can stop looking at me and, and uh, listen to what Joel has to say, but welcome to the third installment of Lexington Learns. And I hope that you are learning about how our businesses are coping with all of the COVID changes and so forth. So here we go. Hello. There we go. There's Joel. Okay. Now, so I imagine most people watching this know you. I mean, you've been, you've been in Lexington a long time. Your store has been there a long time, right? I've been there 57 years. Don't okay. Take it. 57 <laughs> You've been at the store 57 years or just in, oh my gosh. Wow. And did it exist before you or did you found it? It dates back to 1909. My grandfather started the business. Oh it was gosh. incorporated in 1909. We've had a liquor license since 1933, which was repealed. Oh, right, my okay. My grandfather, as legend has it, used to uh, have meat. We used to run cattle behind our old store, which oh, is no right way. next to uh, Mal's. It's a two family with a storefront. Okay. The storefront used to be the old store. They used to actually run cattle. My uncle huh. used to run up and down Mass Ave with a meat wagon. That's how far back we go. <laughs> but my grandfather during uh, the depression used to be very nice with people and he'd give them extra meat and sure. didn't ask them for money. Aww. So when, a look, when the liquor license came by, the head of the, uh, of the uh, selectmen mm -hmm. came to my grandfather Max and said, listen, we have a liquor license here, we'd like you to have it. He said, well, what am I supposed to do with it? He said, we don't know, but you're an honorable guy. We'd like you to have it. We oh, think wow. you should have it. And he said, okay. My father worked for himself for 10 years. He had a uh, driving school, Grove Hall driving school, oh, okay. which was obviously in Boston. Yeah. But my mother, who was prescient, he did that for 10 years and he made money. He was yeah. doing okay. My mother was prescient. She said, look, you're in a seasonal business. Forget that, you go help your father. Uh -huh. And my uncle, I don't know quite what he was doing, but he came, the two brothers came in. Okay. They inherited the business in 1949 when my grandfather passed away. I actually have pictures of them okay. in the store. And uh, I bought my uncle out lock, stock and barrel in uh, 1972. My dad passed in 95 and I've been sold Holy for prior to since. I didn't realize there was that much history. Oh, that's wonderful. History. No, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah, fantastic. My son was fourth generation, but he's not at the shop right now. I sold him my import company, which I started in uh, 1990, called Arboway Imports, which is still extant, and uh, okay. Greg owns that. Okay. And he developed a beer called Clown Shoes. No. Yeah, that's that was him. And I had no idea. Yeah. My oh, yeah. husband drinks a lot of clown shoes. <laughs> clown shoes. It's, it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it's, there's a whole history there. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize you were that famous. There's a lot, not that famous, but <laughs> we're, we're there. Hey, you're famous in, uh, as far as beer circles go, believe me. <laughs> that's, okay. that's famous. My husband is very into beer, so. Cool. Um, in fact, when, when your store is fully open, he plans to come and browse, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, one of these days. I don't know, we're thinking about it. Uh, right now, uh, as I mentioned to you, for the past more than two months, we have been strictly curbside. Right and local deliveries. We made that decision and we were scared to death to do it because we didn't know how it would work out, obviously. We're working right. only from 10 to seven. Really, the shop isn't open except for 12 to seven okay. for customers. Mm -hmm. So if you come to the shop, you tell whomever's out there what you want and they'll go in and get it. That's if you haven't gone online to order okay. or called on the so phone. So you can go order. online or call. Oh, for sure. Okay. Online okay. is the best way. It's the okay. quickest way. It's sure. the most efficient way. Well, it gives them a chance really. to pull the order together before you get there. and. Which is why they open from 10 to 10 to 12 to yeah. get everything together because there's orders coming in all the time, coming mm -hmm. in at night, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is something that we decided to do to protect the public and especially my, my staff because if sure. one of them goes down, I'm, I'm gone. Yes, right. Fortunately, we have five full-time people and two or three really excellent part-time people. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got amazing staff. My general manager, Alex Bloom, is a Cornell graduate. And, uh, my wine buyer, who's t just 28, she's been with me for four years. Oh, wow. Chloe is phenomenal. and. Uh, She's a, a UVM graduate, so they're they're all bright yeah. and, and motivated. They know their stuff. 
they're yeah. terrific. They really yeah. are professional. That's excellent. So, okay, well, one of the things I know you and I had talked about too was that people are people are drinking during. The What's there to do? You can't go to a restaurant. <laughs> well, and even if you do go to a restaurant, most of them can't hand you liquor to go with it too. So it's you know, I mean, some of them have adapted and done you know some yeah. to-go growlers or whatever, but um, for the most part, it's BYOB. So exactly. Yeah. So you're doing your business is doing pretty well. We're very fortunate that we've been able to weather this far better than the average. We're in a great location. Yeah. Uh, the towns around us are, are not uh, as afflicted perhaps as others. A lot of the people sure. that we do business with are working remotely. Yes. You know, and they probably will continue to this what's going to be interesting to see what transpires ultimately. Right. But no, we're, we're okay. We've weathered this fine. That's and, good. Uh, I've made sure that my health have been more than co compensated. Good. To because of this, I mean, yeah. essentially it's hazardous pay. But, yeah. uh, you know, they're working so much harder now. This is so much more difficult than it would be if customers were just allowed to walk into the store, get what they want, go to the, of course. the counter and whatever. Of course. Different ball game. Yes, I, in fact, I had a conversation with my mother last week about grocery shopping. I mean, you know, you can use Instacart or a service like that, but when, it's so much different than walking into the store and just seeing what fresh produce is looking good today. You know, you can say, I want tomatoes, and they can say there are no tomatoes and sure. substitute squash or whatever, sure. but it's not the same thing as just spontaneously walking in and picking up what, what looks good. Yeah. 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 You want to squeeze the fruit. <laughs> you want to, yes, right, exactly. So uh, how are your customers reacting to that? I mean, how, what's the feedback been like? Uh, people are pretty happy. I think that we've gained a tremendous amount of customers who we did not have previously merely because we are being so proactive about uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. and being so cautious with the public and with our staff. Right. You don't have to touch anything. We put it in your trunk. Right. We do this with Savanas, my wife and I. We do this with uh, Formaggios. We do the with, with, uh, with the... Uh, the fishmonger next door to them, we go to High Rise Bakery, all of those people in Cambridge yeah. work similarly to the way we are. Right. You don't have to do anything. You call them up, you order the stuff, you give them a credit card, boom, right. they put it in your trunk. Right. That's what we do. Right. You don't have to see me, you don't have to touch anything. And I think that a lot of people really appreciate that to keep themselves safe. And I stop doing the same thing. I think yeah. it's the right thing to do right now. I agree. I agree. You're doing it the right way. And it's reassuring to everyone to see that, right? Exactly. I mean, you know, we, we're all hearing on the news what the right way is. You know, we've started to hear when places reopen, this is what they have to do. It's nice to see some businesses like yours already doing it. You were doing it before you were told exactly. to do it. Exactly. And that's very reassuring. You've already got a handle on it long before the state is mandating what you have to do to, oh, sure. you know, yeah. yeah. We've been wearing masks and gloves at the shop. Right for three months now, practically. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know. But you haven't been in the shop, you said. You, you're not hey, going in. My wife and I were going in at like 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning and getting out before the staff came in at 10. They kick us okay. out because we're yeah. older. You can't be here. Get out. You're yeah. too old. Well, <laughs> so, that's sweet. I mean, I'm glad they're, you know, taking they're very, that into very account. They're very protective yes. of us. Very good. And uh, we, I bought a new computer, which means I really don't have to go there. My yep. wife now has a printer so she can do all the because she do, does all the paperwork she does all the inputting of the invoices okay. and paying everything so uh, she ha she has a tremendous amount of work that she does sure because if we do business you have invoices you got to pay the Correct. people and and uh, so but we can do it now I mean I get up at seven o'clock in the morning I get out and I can work for two hours and then I go do something else so it, yes it's actually liberating if you will yes no, well, I, I missed the, the same contact. Thing. I missed the contact yes. with the people, both my staff and the customers. But I'm on the I'm on my computer all day long. I uh, see every order that comes in online. I see it on my little phone, which doesn't usually leave me. So I am totally in contact and yeah. totally communicative with with everybody. And I see all the deals <laughs> that are offered to me because they're out. Look, we've got the little bunny rabbits now. <laughs> yeah, it's hungry. But uh, no, I, I see everything that's going on and uh, I can get a lot of work done here even though I'm not physically there. 
I think that, I mean, that's been one of the interesting side effects of this whole shutdown is that so many industries have seen what they can do remotely. You would never have thought about running a retail store remotely before you were forced to do so. And then we adapt and we find ways to do that. And I think a lot of, you know, business models will be changing as a result of, totally. yes. Uh, it's not going to go back the way it was. Right. I've talked to a number of people and a lot of businesses found out that they can work very effectively remotely. Yeah. Why pay the money? Right. Why they pay money for the for the rentals? It's a lot of overhead, yes. It's a lot of overhead and it's not necessary. Right. Things aren't going to go back just the way they were. Right. I think this is a, a change similar to 9-11. Yes. Where this is a point where we're just not going to go back to where it was. This is there's a new normal. We don't know what that is quite yet. Right. But uh, it, it's 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 not going to happen so fast. Well, that was that's, you know, the series is called Lexington Learns. That was one of my questions was going to be, what are you going, when you're allowed to go back to whatever the new normal is? And as you said, we don't know yet. But what do you anticipate keeping? Of these changes that you've had to make, what what do you see carrying forward? Well, I think that ultimately we will go back. Ultimately, that may be next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, within I can see within a month or so where we will probably allow people into the shop mm -hmm. masked. I don't think you need gloves these days, but masked for sure. That's a that's a obligatory yeah. six at a time. Still keep curbside, local deliveries. That's not going to change. Okay. That's that's not going to change for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, for my business, we would hope to go back to we can go back to where we were. Yeah. Okay. Uh, will I work remotely still? Well, I got the computer. The computer works great. <laughs> I mean, right. You know, yeah. But you know, I like I'm 78 years old. Yeah. So I am not running to go back to the shop but I like to go back to the shop yeah and I want to be able to go back without worrying about my health of so course ultimately I would like to be able to go in and work with everybody and see what's going on right. I mean put a 40 hour week and I don't think so but you know 20 sure right because I, I enjoy it but again because I have the computer at home that I, that now ties into the computer at the office right but we hope to go back our business to the way it was prior to uh, March 1st, so, right. so to speak. Right, because, uh, you know, you and I were talking about, you know, you can't, you, you want to be able to, to, to walk through, see what's new. I, I mean, I imagine you did tastings before and things well, like yeah, that. Well, we, we can't do tastings now, quite obviously. Right. Uh, we have a block party that we've run for the past 10 years in September, first couple of weeks uh, on a Saturday, and it's wonderful everybody loves it we have all of the restaurateurs from from Lexington come in and mm -hmm. they give us food the the, uh, the little uh, uh, Indian bistro down the street uh -huh. they come bring us food and the bagel people you know wicked bagel and yeah, all yeah. sorts of different people come and the ice cream that we sell we have the you know coops and uh, yep. JP licks they bring ice cream yeah can't do that this year and, and we're sorry about that we're yeah. really sad about that I can't have a bunch of people, you know, because and it was a it's a party. It's a it's yeah. a it's a love it. People come with their kids and they come with their dogs and and we love it. My wife works, my my, my staff spouses come and help us out. Yeah. My my uh, general manager's mother comes to help us out. It's a, and it's a ball. We can't envision doing that this uh, September. I guess right. it's not gonna happen. Right. You know, we well that's to, I think that's one of the pieces of this that we haven't solved is how to yeah still have community events. Um, you know, the chamber's struggling with what to do with the summer concert series. Yeah, that's true. And we, part of it is waiting on the town. The town hasn't even made a determination yet about outdoor events throughout the summer. You know, through May, it was all canceled, but sure. going into the summer and phase two, phase three, whatever, um, that hasn't yet all been determined. So part of it is we're waiting on that, but, um, you know, there's there's what's allowed. Then there's what people feel comfortable with. These are you know separate questions. We like we're planning on um, having the arts and crafts fair 
in September, which we usually do, mm -hmm. because that's an outdoor event sure. and because it's already structured so the tables are 10 feet apart anyway. Sure. Um, but, you know, we, we will all have to get back a sense of community safely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a problem. It's, it's not going away that quickly, right. obviously. So, you would be in the, the class of businesses for phase two reopening, right? As a retail? We were essential. So we oh, oh, that's we true. Were there. Okay. Okay, yes. No, 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 no. I Believe me, we have to be more there. than one person has told me, yes. <laughs> Think about what would have happened if all the liquor stores were closed. There's yeah. going to be more riots than you have right now. Yeah, true. Go, so. True. Okay. No, we, we were open. So nothing, nothing much will change for you as these phases go until until full reopening. Nothing's going to... No, we had no real uh, direction except from the CDC. Right. The masks, uh, hand washing keep things sanitized but we took it so many steps further than oh that yes yeah because it just it, it made sense for us to do that for us even though it was frightening to not allow people in the store are you kidding yeah really but it works out yeah it's okay you know if we lose something so we lose something but I'm keeping my staff safe and I'm keeping open because without my staff right see you later did you did you apply for the PPP benefits no, and all of that? No. no. Was it necessary? Okay. Yes, we're, we're doing okay. That, that someone else get that money. Well, good for you. Yeah. yeah, good for you. So, anything else you want people to know or to, or uh, you know about the about the store or about anything? Well, the main thing about the store, the first thing is the, the, the people who run it. You know, the people, not just me. I'm talking about. I'm talking about my staff, who I think are just amazing. I'll talk about them. And uh, they're the soul of, this, of the shop. And the merchandise that we choose, we we're very, very picky. Again, I've had my own import company. I'm very right. familiar with going over to France and Italy and finding my own things. So. Right. And Chloe, who's my wine buyer, does a phenomenal job. She, she took over the job from someone, another young fellow who was an Arlington uh, fellow who was a Wesleyan graduate. So okay. I've never had nothing but class people. Yeah. And uh, even if I'm not there choosing the day-to-day -day things, the things that she does and the things that the staff comes, to, comes up with, with Alex and the rest of them, they're all quality wines at very fair prices. And right. we're very fortunate that we have the resources to be able to buy in bulk, yes. buy volume, get the best price, and to pass it on to our customers. I mean, sometimes have the, you know, I saw some people would perceive your elections and you must be more expensive <laughs> not necessarily so sorry yeah we're very competitive yeah you know obviously someone could go find some liquor that someone's working on uh, well, 25 yeah. cents a bottle just to get people in okay right, fine. right so you'll beat me right but when it comes to quality at a price right that's where we win yes and uh, we're very cognizant of that we've been, look i've been there for we've been there for all well, these years right. <laughs> You know, the business has been there for over a hundred years. Think about it. Yeah. How many businesses are, are still extant? I mean, Michelson's is kudos to them. Yes. You know, but uh, that's not the norm today. Correct. And there's a reason why. And we're so proud that people love our shop. They tell us how much they love it. And it, it, it can bring tears to your eyes how, how much they, they love us, you know. But look, I love people. I love to, I love to work what I do, you know, and retail is, uh, is something, you know what it is, you've, you've done it. Yes. Uh, you have to love it, you have to love people. If you don't like people, you can't do retail. You shouldn't even think of it. Yes. You should go in the insurance business or something, <laughs> sit, sit in a cubicle, you know, don't bother people. No, I mean, really. No, I, it's, I it's, agree it's, with you. you know, I'm laughing because it's true. Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, you know it. Yeah. But, uh, that's, that's how we operate and, uh, you know, we, we, we try to do the best we can for everybody. We, we are as honorable and honest and, and clear in our dealings with people. And uh, it, it comes back on you. you yes. Know? And, and we're very gratified for the response that we get from the, from the public. Yeah. Well, you should be. You, I, like you said, a hundred year business is not a fluke. It's not, you know, no. that doesn't happen by accident. Any one of us could have blown it. And I think that, it, and, and you haven't, right. And, and I think the key to a business like yours or Michelson's or any of the, you know, really long time businesses is the adaptability. 
because you could still be doing things the way you were doing them a hundred years ago too sure. and you're not you're adapting with the times you're keeping the parts of the business that have made you very successful the customer service and being very careful with you know the what with the wines you're choosing and all of that but you're also bringing in the new technology to be able to to go remotely for customers to do curbside etc cetera, etc cetera. Sure. and I, I think that's wonderful yeah and same with the craft beer i mean I, i'm not a big beer drinker i enjoy a beer every now and then but I, that's not my forte but yeah. We have an unbelievable selection of craft beers. I mean, you, your husband probably knows this. You know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, I don't choose them, but I have two people who are very involved in yes. ordering all of the. I have to have two people do it. I believe that. And uh, it's a huge it market. Changes every week. Yes, it's a huge I mean, market. It, it's huge. I mean, I receive when I receive merchandise from, let's say, craft uh, brewing company. Th there could be fifty different SKUs right. of different products. I mean, it's hello, really. Yeah. And next week. And they're it's constantly experimenting, and they're, yeah, that uh, that's the that is the craft beer market is new, 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 new all the time. And, well, yeah. they're going to be hurt by this. That's one area that uh, a lot of people were going to come out, and now they will not. Correct. And uh, some that are here now won't be here next year. Right. Because it's a super saturated market. Yes. And there's a lot of quality product out there, and it's going to be the survival of the fittest. It's going to be it's going to be tough. Yes. And there's a lot of there's a lot of cost in changing your formula over and over and over again. You know. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like you say, it's a, it's all evolving. I mean, 50 years ago, people weren't buying wine. Right. And I looked at it, and I went away on vacation one day with my wife. I was going to have uh, it's in January. I was going to have the store uh, an addition put on some work okay. done. The carpenter didn't show up. So the carpenter didn't show up before I went away. I said, okay. I spent five thousand dollars, which was a lot of money back then, yeah. and bought Bordeaux. And I put it on. For me, it was like selling penny candy. I put it on the floor. <laughs> if I paid three, I sold it for four. I didn't care. Yeah. I came back from vacation. Three quarters of it was gone. <laughs> One of the wines was, and I'll never forget, it was a 1964 Chateau Beige Brut, which today goes for two hundred dollars a bottle. Oh so. my goodness. Back then, I was selling it for like four ninety nine. So I sold all that. I had paid $40 dollars a case for it, and I called my distributor, Leo Salkin, God rest his soul. I said, Leo, I need another five cases. It's $60. I said, what do you mean it's $60? Last week it was $40. <laughs> he says, that was last week. This is this week. <laughs> I said, this I have to learn about. <laughs> Supply and demand. Well, there it is. Well, you know, it, this is something that appreciates in value. Correct. Seagram 7 at 55.65 for a case of quartz, which is what we paid back then. Yep. Didn't change in price. <laughs> right. For years it was the same. Right. Well, don't yeah. go up in price. Yeah. I mean, today it's different because the prices are so high for these things that we can't invest in them or buy them as futures to sell as futures, which is what we used to do. Okay. It was terrific business for us. Uh -huh. But today, it costs too much for everybody yeah. to invest. And today it's just as apt to go down as up. Uh -huh. So you buy something for, let's say, hundred dollars a case. It might be a hundred dollars a case two years from now. Why invest in it now? Yeah. Or it might be hundred and ten. Right. Or it might be ninety. Right. So why bother? Yeah. You know, there are certain things you may want to sell as a futures. And then there are futures that we do a lot of business. Oh really? With futures, Burgundy futures, Bordeaux, to lesser degree, Barolo. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things we sell in advance at special prices to customers because we have pre-arrival pricing. Oh, interesting. And those never, no, they never even hit the shelves. Something ah. like uh, Comte Lafon, uh, Macron, we sell those in advance. I mean, we sell a lot of these. We give very special pricing, mm -hmm. work on very low margins. We sell a lot. Yeah. It, so you have, a, you have a customer list of people who, oh, sure. it's like a like preview list. Oh, sure. Yeah? Yeah, we have an email list. If you sign up, if you look on our uh, website, bermansfinewines.com, or Berman's um, uh, Wine and Spirits, mm -hmm. Berman's Fine Wines is what will get you to it. You can okay. sign up to that. You know, what's interesting about uh, the most, one of the more interesting aspects of what's going on with COVID and how we've been operating is we have added 25% more customers to our email list than we had previously in oh, the past wow. two months. Yeah. Because people want to buy online and this enables them to buy from wine fetch through us. Yeah. And, and uh, so we have more and more customers who are involved in this. They get my emails. We put out email specials 
at least once a week, sometimes twice. We try not to inundate people with them unless we have something we really think we have to say, but right. we don't want to be a, a, you know, a pain to people because right. we all get a lot of emails. We do, but the, what I have found, and I, I mean, I'm doing this with the chamber. The chamber was previously doing emails you know, once a month. I've made it every two weeks sure. because when there's real information to share, as you said, yeah. when it's, it's not fluff. It's information that you need to get out there and people genuinely want to hear, you know, you're sending it to them because you don't want them to miss this opportunity on a, a wine that is never going to hit the shelves and is going to be gone as soon as you offer it. So That's absolutely right. right. Recently, especially because with the restaurants having obviously their difficulties, I've had a number of opportunities to buy some excellent burgundies at below wholesale prices so I can actually offer them at wholesale to customers. Wow. Great price. Here, yeah. out, boom, see a Pomar, a Chablis, Premier Cruz, etc. We've yeah. done a great job with it. Can buy it. It's gone. I know it's gone. Under 10 cases, see you later. It's gone. Wow. But it's a great opportunity for people to, to, to opt in if they want it. Yeah. And we have a number of people who are sophisticated enough to know what these things are and they, and they buy them. Has there been any disruption to the supply chain? Yeah, sure. Don't forget, uh, back in October, you had the tariffs. People don't, don't yes. remember those tariffs. Yes. But those tariffs affected uh, not Italian wine, of course. but uh, French wine. Yep. They affected scotch. Yep. They didn't affect champagnes or sparkling wines, but it, they affected a lot of different things. So that has not helped. Mm -hmm. What's fascinating is, <laughs> in their infinite wisdom, Wines that are over 14% in alcohol, which most Rhone wines and most Italian wines, especially from the Piedmont or from Tuscany, which they're not affected anyhow, uh -huh. they're over 14%. So okay. they're not even hit by the tariff. So I see. we're okay. We really worried about the 100% tariff that was theoretically <laughs> going to go into effect on Feb in February 21st. And that, yeah. would have been a, that would have been devastating. But those tariffs did not help us at all. Oh, I'm and, sure. And we're hoping uh that they go away uh next year sometime right that would be good right yes all right excellent thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me it's been very educational for me i didn't know all of this about your business so i'm glad that you did yeah, this there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that just don't meet the eye exactly i mean you it's not just you know, my wife had a friend one time, well, your husband really has it made. She says, well, how's that? Well, yeah, all he should do is go in, he sits behind the counter, he takes the merchandise, <laughs> puts it in the bag, brings it in, and it's done. You know, the, the merchandise jumps on the shelf by itself. Yeah. We receive it by itself. It's been chosen. It, it just shows up. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's the other aspect. Sure. I just, you know, there's, there's no thinking of all right. Right. You know, I mean, even today with, with COVID, most of the merchandise that gets delivered to us, not like it was previously, it gets dropped, and my staff has to put it away. Yes. The, the truck drivers don't don't actually come into the store. Yeah, I mean that may have changed since uh, r recently. Or right. Recently, right. But, uh, it, it's it's not it's not as easy as one might think. Right. Obviously. No, retail is not an easy business. You know. It's, right. Retail is not an easy business, and you're right. There is so much that goes on Behind that the scenes. that yep. people don't see, and but that's good. Yeah. I think if if people aren't seeing that, if it seems effortless. Yep that's then you're doing it right because exactly. that's what the customers want the customers want it to seem very easy sure. effortless yeah. it's just about the the relationship with them when they're in the store it isn't you know you aren't at that point focused on you know where's this shipment and why isn't this on the shelf and how did this skew get messed up and whatever you're focused on them sure. because you've already done all this behind the scenes that they don't ever it's have like to going see. going into a restaurant when we could go into a restaurant. Yeah. Which hopefully we'll be able to go into a restaurant. You go in, you just want to have your dinner, a nice dinner. You don't want to hear anything that's going on in the kitchen. Exactly. I don't want to hear the chef cursing. I don't want to hear the owner yelling at a, a waiter. Right. We've all seen this. Right. I mean, it's not often, but I don't want to know from that. Right. Just bring me my food. Exactly. Leave me alone. You take care of your business, and I'll take care of mine. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Totally. All right. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this back around here. Um, oh, we have a couple of comments. Okay. So first, yes. um, Carol Delugi from our Chamber of Commerce says, right. good morning. Good morning um, and Fred Johnson says, great to see and hear Joel. Oh, so Fred. He's a great guy. Fred is a great guy. And, uh, and my husband is watching. 
probably to get beer tips, just so you know. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. This will be posted later, so you can go back and watch anytime you want to. And this afternoon at 2.30, I'll be talking to Kathy Fields uh, from Crafty Yankee. So tune in for that, too. I know we have a lot of wonderful people in, in Lexington. These are, I mean, these are fun interviews for me to do. So, all right. Thanks, everyone.